Bernard has organized his gang to work as best they can, to make money for food and clothes. Although sometimes they even steal for them. <laughs> Bernard's gang live in Mathari Valley, on the outskirts of Kenya's capital city, Nairobi. Nobody is sure how many people live here, perhaps a quarter of a million. Many of them have no papers or documents, which makes it hard for them ever to move anywhere else. Over Africa, there are tens of millions of people who have no homes, often because of wars, famine, and drought. They pour into the cities to look for work, food, and somewhere to live. Usually, their journey ends here, in one of these huge shanty towns. Most of the people living here are squatters. They live in huts of wood or cardboard that have been illegally built on land they don't own, but they still have to pay rent. These huts have no running water or electricity or extra rooms, and the things we take for granted have a high price. Water has to be paid for, so does medicine, charcoal for cooking, and fuel for kerosene lamps. If you're poor and don't have a job, it's hard to know how to make money to pay for these things. The people here make their living as best they can. For the children of the slums, life is even harder. Children are often the victims of disease, and many don't even make it to Bernard's age. My mother chucked me out because she could not afford to take care of all of us. You see, we are a big family. We were 14 children, but two died. Some of us are pretty small. In the mornings, the smaller boys from the gang, Kaze, Muthe, Mwangi, and Kumani, leave the hut early. They go to scavenge in the rubbish dumps for food scraps, metal, and waste paper, not returning home until the evening. Bernard leaves for the city center. You can get money for all sorts of things here, bottle tops, pieces of cardboard, and charcoal. The boys sell the charcoal back to the merchants. Kaze says how much they get depends on the charcoal merchant's mood. They might get only one shilling for a bag, just 4p in English money. But if they're lucky, it might be as much as 16p. The boys won't go into another gang's territory because they might get beaten up. This boy, John Danbu, is a member of Bernard's gang who earns some money looking after a neighbor's sheep. In return for taking the sheep to graze each day and collecting scraps of food for them, John sometimes sleeps at the old man's hut when Bernard's is overcrowded. The main problems living on your own are foods and clothes. 
You cannot go and ask for a job if you are dirty. You won't get it. People will call you a thief. There used to be fights because school children used to throw stones at us and insult us by calling us names, saying we were thieves because we don't go to school. But when you are many, you can help each other. The younger boys in the gang spend nearly all their time scavenging for food. Being hungry is their main problem. Even when they get food, it's often old leftovers, or just not the right kind for growing children. Once a week, the gang walk to the other side of Nairobi to a rich suburb, where a wealthy businessman has given money to the woman who owns this food kiosk to give poor boys something to eat and drink. The boys call him their good Samaritan, although they've never met him. Here they get their weekly ration of half a loaf of bread and something to drink. They will go home via the local market to get some leftover vegetables or fruit and almost certainly won't eat again that day. There are eight in my gang at the moment. <laughs> the largest group I ever had living in my house was 18. I would take anybody in, except boys who sniff glue or boys whose fathers have money. I only help poor boys. We can tell by the way they dress, they don't have any money. This is the main market in Nairobi city centre. These street children are trying to earn some money as parking boys, helping motorists to find spaces to park or carrying shopping to people's cars. These boys also come from the slums. Some years ago, a special society was started to help the parking boys, giving them somewhere to sleep, cook a meal, and sometimes reuniting them with their families. The society is called Undugu, and its work here was started by this man, Father Arnold Grohl. Today, he's called Nairobi's oldest parking boy. A Dutchman, he first came to Africa more than 30 years ago. Father Grohl and the Undugu Society started working among the unemployed youth of Nairobi. Then, Father Grohl was asked to help the parking boys, and Undugu's work expanded to help all the people living in the slums. Undugu is the Swahili word for brotherhood and solidarity. In Father Grohl's church on the edge of Mathari Valley, his congregation know what it is to be hungry for much of the time. So his Sunday sermon of how Jesus fed 5,000 people with five loaves and two fishes is much appreciated and understood. Some of the street children told Father Grohl they wanted to learn to read and write because it's only through education they can escape their poverty. Although schooling is free in Kenya, books and uniforms have to be paid for, which would be impossible for the poor people of the shanty towns. Together with the Ministry of Education, Undugu started slum schools with studies especially suited to the children's needs. Sometimes street children find it hard to adjust to school disciplines after the freedom of the streets. Bernard used to go to one of the Undugu schools, 
but he dropped out. Now, however, he's found himself a job as an apprentice motor mechanic. To become an apprentice in Kenya, you have to find a fundi or teacher to train you. The fundi has to be paid. So Bernard went to Undugu to ask them to help him pay his teacher. Now he works from Monday to Friday at the garage with his fundi. And on Saturdays, he comes to the Undugu workshop to study for the exam he will have to take after a year. Usually, the garage gives me five shillings each day. I use two shillings fifty for lunch and two shillings fifty for the bus fare back home. But it depends how much work there is. Because there are a lot of us working at the garage, sometimes we are only given two shillings. To the spark plug, it goes to earth. So if you know motor mechanics, you can get work at a big company. The big thing is, you can learn to drive a car. To store the current from the Although his apprenticeship means Bernard has the chance of a future job, it also means one pair of hands less to collect the scrap metals or charcoal which the gang sell to make money for food. The mobile cinema. It comes to Mathari Valley once a month and it's free. For the people of Mathari with no electricity or TV and some of them unable to read or write, it's very popular. This is where the gang first got together. The first time we met was at the cinema at night. It was raining. The boys asked where they could sleep. So I said they could sleep here for one night. Then gradually we became friends and started living together. We live together because we help each other. I help the others by giving them a place to sleep. We all help each other when we are in trouble. If you are alone, you don't know what to do because there are all kinds of gangs here. You need a gang to live in. Having a gang can also mean problems. Today, there's a particularly difficult one. Hello, Bernard. How are you? Bernard's best friend, Samuel, has been arrested for stealing some clothes. Bernard goes to Father Grohl for help. Oh, so you want to talk about Samuel? Yes. What has happened to Samuel? He was in jail. Was he in jail? Again? Yes. And why? It's not the first time Samuel has been in trouble with the police. But why does he steal clothes? If he would have come to me, I could have talked to him. Father Grohl goes to the police to find out what has happened to Samuel. He has stolen Samuel. He has to go to the Boston Institute for three years. So I have promised to give him a good education. And then once he learns to trade like mechanics or captain, after he comes out of prison, we are going to help him. Is that OK? Yes. He goes to Boston. He goes to the Bristol. He can't. He he is stolen. I I can't always defend people who steal. So, oh, but yes. we will help him in the Bristol. And when he comes out, it was you and myself. We are going to help him. Is that okay? Yes. He goes there to stay in Adria for three years, and then he gets education in carpentry or masonry, and he makes trade tests. And then when he comes out of prison, we will help him get. Samuel's arrest was not Bernard's only problem that day. Another boy recently out of prison and hearing the gang were being filmed assumed they were being paid a lot of money. He told Bernard he wanted half of everything they earned that week. Bernard told us he was worried about going back to his hut that night and went to visit his family instead. When he got there, he found his mother had been taken ill. 
My mother is sick at the moment. So if I go to work, there is nobody to visit her. I like my family very much, even though I don't live with them. You know, when you are on your own, nobody tells you what to do. But there are problems. Since my mother gave me the house, she has not done any repairs. We do those. The smaller kids bring papers and cardboard from the rubbish heaps, but it leaks when it rains. If my mother dies, there would be many problems because of my smaller brothers and sisters. Happily, Bernard's mother did not die. Father Grohl helped her to get to hospital, and she's now better. Night time in Mathari Valley. Although it looks exciting, it can be dangerous. There's a lot of drunkenness and people get attacked. The smaller boys keep away from the main roads and take the narrow back alleys home to the hut. They usually lock themselves in at 10 o'clock. Jose, Boikioko and Kumani go for a morning bath. Rather than spend precious pennies on water, they use the foundations of an unfinished building that are filled with rainwater. One of the big men in Mathari is a brewer. He's given the gang some work, bringing firewood to the river to help make changar. Changar is a very strong drink made from sugar cane. Because it's against the law, it's usually made at night. The boys don't drink it, but some have been known to sniff flu or petrol. Bernard is unhappy because he's heard that Kaze has been sniffing glue. He's frightened that Kaze will get ill. Kaze denies it and says it is another boy. Bernard tells him he's also seen him smoking marijuana. Kaze at first says he doesn't know what it is and then that he's stopped. Bernard says that Kaze doesn't want to listen and will only stop when he feels like it. Kaze says that it's another gang who've been doing it and that they have been telling lies about him. Bernard doesn't believe him. He can smell the glue on him. He tells Kaze if he gets sick, he won't be able to look after him, and that he once knew a boy who died from sniffing glue. He's worried the same will happen to Kaze. If it continues, they will have to part company. For Bernard, being gang leader has brought many responsibilities. 
His mother's illness, Samuel's arrest, and his argument with Kaze are things a parent would normally cope with. But they're still not the main thing on his mind. The first thing in his mind is food. And clothes. Today he has not yet eaten, for instance. In a little while, Bernard will be taking his mechanics exam and will start work. How does he plan the future? Uh, he will immediately go somewhere else. Does he know where he will go? He says the only thing that is matters that he gets a house where he can live well with his wife and children. And how many children you want? Na onataka kupata watoto wangapi? Football team zima? Ah, He wants only three children, not a football team. The constant struggle to survive can be disheartening. Father Groll understands that it's easy for the gang to get depressed sometimes. He arranges a street party for them, together with another gang. Bernard and the boys are just like children everywhere and enjoy the opportunity to meet new friends, have some fun and play together. But the everyday difficulties the gang have to face will still be there tomorrow. I know you are so nice. I like the way you dance. Oh yeah.